Being a farmer is obviously incredibly hard work, but uh, I don't know what's going on. There seems to be some very strange stuff that goes on at farms too. Today we have stories about creepy creatures, toxic waste, remnants from World War II, and plenty more. So don't go anywhere, because we're talking about some of the scariest stuff farmers have found on their property. We're starting off the list with a crazy story from Reddit. User Erotica Pop posted a story about their uncle who was a farmer, writing, This happened to my uncle, as told to me by my aunt. In 2003, my uncle, who has a hobby farm in East Texas, was on his tractor on the far end of his property when flaming space debris went screaming over his head to crash behind the trees about 30 yards away. He calls my aunt and asks her to turn on the news to see if something crashed. She does, and it's the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster, and they're telling locals to stay away from debris and report it to officials. So she tells my uncle they're telling people to stay away from it, and he's revving up his tractor, saying, I'm gonna go find it. He looked but didn't find any debris, but on the property next to theirs, authorities found some debris and a thigh from one of the two women astronauts on the flight. Speaking of things crashing down from the sky, next up we have the wreckage of a World War II plane and its occupants. So during World War II in June of 1944, Lieutenant William Montgomery and his crew were flying a B-24 Liberator on a mission in northern France. Their plane got hit by anti-aircraft fire while attacking a German airfield. Despite the damage though, they managed to limp back across the English Channel towards Sussex. Unfortunately, the plane lost altitude off the Sussex coast. Out of the 10-man crew, seven successfully parachuted out, but Lieutenant Montgomery, co-pilot John Crowther, and engineer Sergeant John Holka stayed on the plane to try and fix the issues. Sadly, the plane crashed in flames a few minutes later. At that time, only Sergeant Crowther's body was recovered. The families were informed that the plane had gone down in the English Channel. One surviving crew member, Lieutenant Des Moines Henderson, shared that they were ordered to bail out just before reaching the English coast, and he heard the plane crashing after his parachute opened. In the 70s, amateur historian Andy Saunders started investigating the fate of the bomber. After years of research, he finally narrowed down the likely location of the plane to a farm near Arundel, West Sussex. In 2019 and 2021, a U.S. agency that investigates missing servicemen conducted two digs at the site. And during their excavations, they identified plane wreckage and two sets of human remains. This finally brought closure to the family, including Lieutenant Montgomery's great niece, Tracy Kirchhoff. Her grandfather, John, died in 2010 without knowing what happened to his brother, William. So Tracy was able to lay flowers at a plaque marking the site of the discovery. This next story, also comes to us from Reddit. Seems like there was a very disturbed person stalking the woods by this family's property. Fluffy but 86 writes, me and some of my family were walking through my grandmother's property. We got to the creek. My nephew is exploring down the creek near a clump of trees, a fair distance from us. Suddenly he starts screaming and hauls it back to the main group. What he'd found was that somebody had tied a kitten to a tree using a wire. It was dead and moderately, but not totally decayed. So I'm guessing it had some combination of being tormented or starved to death. We're away in the woods at this point. There's no neighbors that far in. So immediately my alarms are going off. We all head back to the farm, super freaked out. I haven't gone past the first fence line on that property since. In hindsight, I wish we'd called the police. The older adults in the group at the time didn't think that was necessary, and I was unsure of what the point would be. Are the police gonna go hike way into the woods to look at it? I'm still not sure what they would have done, but I wish we had called. We have the discovery of toxic waste dumping. Now, this didn't just happen on one farm, but tons of farms in Naples, Italy, and this is something that went on for years. So in the 90s and 2000s, the mafia in Naples, Italy, began illegally dumping toxic waste. Not only were there serious environmental threats here, but local farms 
were decimated. The Mafia were trying to make quick profits, as criminal organizations are kinda known to do, by disposing of hazardous waste in an inexpensive way, which means illegally. This toxic waste included chemicals and industrial byproducts, which contaminated the soil and water in the surrounding areas. The pollutants infiltrated the soil, affecting crops and livestock. The quality of agriculture produce declined, and farmers lost tons of money because of their damaged harvests. Things got so bad that an infamous area became known as the Triangle of Death. And this region, uh, including parts of Naples and then surrounding areas, it got the name because of the unusually high rates of cancer and respiratory illnesses amongst the people. And then again, is it really that unusual when there's toxic waste seeping into the soil, getting into people's food, and just being around? I've seen the Toxic Avenger. I know what green glowing ooze can do to a person's health. I picture it as green glowing ooze, but it's probably just not anything like that at all. And the toxic waste didn't just pollute the farmlands, it also seeped into the water sources. Just a really bad scene. Next on the list is something that's also very dangerous, unexploded ordnance from World War I and II. Imagine you're farming your land, you're trying to grow crops or tend your animals, and then suddenly you stumble on something unexpected. An unexploded shell from a war that happened decades ago. Kinda cool, but obviously very dangerous, and farmers in parts of Europe are still met with this to this day, dealing with what's known as the Iron Harvest. So back in the First World War, more than 300 million explosive devices were scattered around Belgium alone. And most of these were duds, meaning they never exploded. And after all these years, many of the dangerous leftovers haven't been found and disarmed. They've just sat there, hidden beneath the soil, waiting to be discovered. Fast forward to the Second World War, and we have another issue. British and American forces dropped a whopping 1.5 million tons of explosives on Germany, and 10% of those never went off. So that's a lot of explosive material just lying around. Even today, tons of unexploded ordnance are found every year in Germany. Now, aside from the sheer amount of explosives that were dropped, there's also another reason why these things are still turning up to this day. During the First World War, the muddy conditions of trench warfare made it very easy for shells and bullets and bombs to kind of sink into the mud. They practically disappeared, but now, thanks to construction work, in farming activity, all that soil is being constantly churned up, and along with it comes the dangerous stuff buried beneath. All right, this next one is short, but sweet. I, I, I think you'll like this one. Sweet in like a scary way, not sweet like it's a nice story. Reddit user Fukas Trash, Fukasa Trash, I'm sorry Reddit user, I'm not sure exactly how you want me to pronounce that, but he had this to say. This is a story that's passed down from my great grandma, so I can't really speak to the validity of it since I never knew her, though it's quite interesting and she was apparently a very serious person that never joked about things like this. She had gone out to the fields to play when she was young, and she saw an old man sitting in a rocking chair beckoning her to come to him. She ran back to the house to get her parents, but when they came back, he was gone. I don't know, I just think that one's kinda creepy. Next on the list we have some Bigfoot footage for you, or at least possible Bigfoot footage. The footage was taken in Hickory, North Carolina by a man named Doug Teague while he was collecting game cameras that he'd set up close to his property in McDowell County. As he was walking back to his truck, a rock was thrown at him. He turned around to spot apparently three massive hairy creatures up on a hill behind the trees. He pulled out his phone and managed to capture some footage of one of the animals, and while it's tough to make out, there's definitely something in the trees. Take a look. So it looks like it could be a bear, but apparently there have been a number of sightings of big ape-like creatures in the area, so could this have been one of the elusive beasts known as Bigfoot? As always, share your thoughts down in that comment section. Next, we have another Reddit story for you. This one posted by Stunning Attention 82 
writes, My grandpa had a farm with free range cattle. He had a massive property. We didn't always see the cows every day. They'd go off in the fields in little groups. We knew they were out there, but they just did their own thing. We visited the farm one day and my grandparents weren't home. They always had a spare key hidden on the porch in case a family member was visiting and they weren't around. Well, my mom unlocked the door and the alarm went off. It was loud because they're in the country. The alarm was made to sound like a siren to alert the closest neighbors. It echoed all over the fields. We were in the house calling family members on their rotary phone, trying to figure out how to shut off the alarm. Then I looked out the window, the cows, cows from all directions running towards us. I had never seen them run like this. They were running at the house full speed, every single one. Then they stopped, they formed a circle around the entire house, standing shoulder to shoulder, and they just stood there staring at us. My big question for this is, they have this advanced alarm system, but are still using a rotary phone? That doesn't really add up. Anyway, next up we have the discovery of glyptodon fossils. So in 2020, an Argentinian farmer named Juan de Dios Sota came across a pretty fascinating find on his farm while moving some cattle. Fascinating, putting it very lightly. This would have been absolutely insane. So a river that had dried up after a drought revealed the fossilized remains of what looked like four enormous armadillos. They were actually a prehistoric creature known as glyptodons. These creatures have been extinct for about 10,000 years, just after the end of the last ice age. These things' shells were five feet long and two inches thick. Researchers now couldn't exactly figure out how these specific glyptodons had met their end, but the fossils hinted that they were all facing in the same direction, as if they'd been on a group outing, all heading somewhere. These particular glyptodons were estimated to have died around 20,000 years ago. Now, why did these massive creatures go extinct in the first place? Well, it turns out our ancient ancestors might have played a role in that. People back then apparently would have used the glyptodon shells as makeshift shelters. Yeah, they were so big that humans could actually sleep under their shells. Pretty cool. Finally though, we have a creature that's gotta be enemy number one on farmers' most hated cryptids list, the chupacabra. There are countless stories about this terrifying creature slaughtering farmers' livestock. Farmers in parts of Latin America and even in the southern US have reported sightings and incidents involving creatures that share very similar appearances, but at the same time, kind of different. From what I've read, there are two types of creatures that people will report seeing, and for some reason, they both get lumped into the chupacabra category. So you have some witnesses who describe the chupacabra as an almost reptilian type creature with big red glowing eyes and often spikes or quills on its back. Then you have the other type, which is more like a mangy, hairless dog type creature. The name chupacabra translates to goat sucker in Spanish, as it's known to drain the bodily fluid of livestock, mostly goats and chickens. Farmers have shared some pretty creepy accounts of finding their animals dead with puncture wounds on their necks and their red bodily fluid completely drained from their bodies. In some cases, the chupacabra is said to leave behind a scene of complete chaos with multiple animals attacked in a single night. Any farmers in the audience here, uh, share your creepiest farm stories down below. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.